Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, congratulations with the starting of Olympics. <laughs> um, and uh, is arriving to this uh, midterm uh, thing. So uh, thank you for sending your slides. Uh, I appreciate your your effort. It was it was a lot, and I, I think we all will in, enjoy your slides, and you will use them as a reference for uh, your progress further. So um, the hello, Mel. Thank you for joining online. <clears throat> Please try to use five minutes only. If you are staying longer than five minutes, I'll come to the stage and try to push you away. <laughs> it, it's uh, because uh, questions are, are welcomed if you if your classmates um, do not allow you to live by tons of questions, it, it, it's a different thing, but actual presentations shouldn't be long. Um, I think the, the next thing is, is not a uh, joke anymore, but I, I do not, because it's old, but I do not have any other words to uh, announce it. So if you never seen uh, Windows, here it is. <laughs> if you if you if you did, so here are your slides. They are uh, labeled by numbers in the order of presentation and by your names. So just by coming, click on your presentation, it will pop up. Go to presentation mode, and uh, I will make sure it is um, camera is focused on you. So if you want to just show on something, it could be recorded. Um, we need to focus uh, camera onto the instructor view. And the goal of today's meeting is to get hands-on experience with MATLAB, although it is not the main goal of the course. We need to practice some, um, uh, to get some uh, first part of the physical chemistry concepts related to quantum theory. And uh, we are doing this bypass to MATLAB uh, as, a, as a shortcut, it looks like we're investing more time, but it is a shortcut that will allow us to use computers to solve equations which are otherwise would be unsolvable, take too, too, too long. So with this, I would like to um, you can either mount the microphone or keep it uh, in, in hands while presenting. And with this, I would like to invite to the stage the first uh, speaker, Abdullah. Please uh, come. So if you want to see how uh, how you are how you look like in the camera, here is a little panel. Floor is yours. At least I will count time, but most of your questions. And try to record the screen. Hello everyone, can you hear me? So today I will be presenting these topics in MATLAB. So the first topic is complex number in MATLAB and functions in MATLAB. And finally, the basic graphics for functions. So I'm gonna start with the complex number in MATLAB. So MATLAB uh, completely and totally understand that uh, I is the imaginary number and if you just wanna type I into MATLAB, you will get the real part and the imaginary part. So MATLAB understand that I is a complex number and also the symbol J is, the, uh, is considered to be like uh, imaginary number. So the bottom line is that you are never gonna use I as uh, by itself as a variable because 
I means zero plus one I to MATLAB. So here are some examples of uh, uh, calculations using or complex number calculation using MATLAB. So if you just type two I, you will get zero plus two I. You don't even have to add the multiplication symbol because MATLAB understand that's I is uh, a zero plus two I. You can also like uh, use the multiplication symbol in the second photo. You see, you will get the same thing back. And if you also do 50, 55 I, so you are, that means you are talking about zero for the real number and 55 for the imaginary number. So, and, the, and here you just type I plus I plus I. So MATLAB understand that it's just three I. In the last photo, I use the parentheses to show you this is the first number and this uh, the first complex number, and this is the second complex number. So MATLAB is going to add the real bars together and the imaginary number uh, together. The second uh, topic of my presentation today is functions in MATLAB. So I use this function and add it to MATLAB by following the steps. Like first, you go to new script and type function just to tell MATLAB you are gonna add function. Then uh, put the A, which is the output variable or the result of, the, of this equation. Then uh, you type the function name. I just use my function as the name of the function. Then I put the input variables. So then I save the equation. Then you, uh, I can go to the command uh, window and just uh, identify my variables to get the solution for the function. I used here x as three and y as four and did my function to get 17 because three plus four is seven times 10 is 17. Uh, the last part of my presentation today is how to like, generate basic graph or function. So first you have to generate list of X, Y points from the function. Then simply you just type plot to get the, the graph. So here I bought like X uh, start from zero and increments of one uh, to 10. Then I use Y, X, y equals X squared, uh, uh, X squared, X, exponent two, I get the X values and the Y values. Then somebody type plot X, Y, you will get the graph. So here are the references I used and I will be very happy to answer your question. Thank you. I square. I square. Error. Huh? You will get learn error. Like I don't understand. So. At the beginning, you introduce I as a imaginary. Ah. If you practice. It's, it's gonna be minus one. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, next uh, presenter is uh, Lola, so please proceed to the stage. Oh, someone is already applauding. <laughs> it's like when, when, when a star comes to the, to the stage. So I think uh, here it is. Microphone. I'm to blow this up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I will be speaking about the derivative by final difference and integration by sum. So, um, a final difference is a mathematical expression of this form. And 
when it's divided by um, the difference in um, when it's divided by the difference of the constants that are present in the function, it's called a difference quotient. Now, a difference quotient is the average rates of change of a function over an interval. Now, the um, final difference is an approximation of the derivative and it's um, typically numerical derivative. Here I have um, an approximation of derivative using the concept of finite difference as the limit of h goes to zero. Okay, so how does MATLAB do this? It uses the diff function. When you use the um, diff function and you have some set of values constant, it gives you the individual differences. That's what you have here. This is the finite difference. Then, okay, so you specify a set of values for x and you plot um, a graph of the diff function of say x square and you divide by 0 0.1 which here i'm trying to define the derivative depending on what your system is or depending on what your equation is this value can change here is where i've defined my um, difference quotient and here is the graph that you get out of this. Um, integration by sum. Integration is the area under a curve, usually contains um, rectangular pieces. Here I'm showing the different rectangular pieces under the um, curve. And I'm taking data x here as the individual changes um, the individual pieces under this curve. Now, when I multiply this increment theta x by the function, it's the area under this curve. So how does MATLAB do this? Say you define some set of values x, which I had defined earlier, you take the sum and you multiply by 0 0.1, which I'm taking as the increment in my function you will get this value. Here is how um, MATLAB defines integration by sum. And here is where and how it does the sum. Thank you. So uh, what do you always consider about uh, derivatives and integrals? If you can't do that, probably you will never get back to calculus in our lives. <laughs> And um, can we go a couple of slides back when we uh, use derivatives one more? Yeah. Forward. Yeah, here. Uh, in the figure that is hidden right now, uh, the x axis is labeled as grid point, discrete grid point. Mm -hmm. What if you decide that you need to uh, make this derivative as function of actual argument, actual x variable? Are, are there any uh, difficulties on this way? If you just plot x comma diff uh, of your function, you would immediately plot or give any error? It won't give any error. Or it will? It's x diff of the function. Uh -huh. X comma. X, it won't. So, uh, how many points are here? Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so you need to add um so that's one, two, three, four, five, four values and then five inputs and then you're getting four outputs. So you need like zero to mm -hmm. make up for it. Everyone uh, understands? So we have like five points for each side. 
when you take derivative, you have one less grid points. And in order to avoid error, one needs to add just dummy empty variables, empty values. Make sense? More questions to all? One, two, three. No questions, so thanks so much again. So the next presenter. Uh, oh, Mel, thank you for applauding on, online. Yeah, Irina, please please proceed to the stage. And here is a little button to start. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning. Um, I am going to be talking about vectors in MATLAB and a couple of different things you can do with them. So um, the heading just says vectors in MATLAB. So two ways you can divide a vector, you either have a row or a column. Um, in order to define a row vector, you can either use a space between the numbers that you want to put in your vector. So surrounded by brackets on both sides, um, you could use a comma. And another way for a row vector is to put just a colon between the range of numbers you want to have. So if I move this zoom thing right here, um, you can see the different functions. So if you look on the right where it has all the variables defined, you'll notice both of the A's and the X are all the same vector. So it's basically produces the same, the same values. And then both B's are also the same vector. So yeah, so those are two ways to define, or a couple of ways to define row and column vectors in MATLAB. Um, so you can multiply vectors. So here is how you would do a dot product, also known as the scalar product of vectors. Um, so in MATLAB, you can either do equal to dot of your two vectors, or you can just use um, the little star to indicate that you are multiplying them. So whenever you do a dot or scalar product, you will get an actual number value out of your multiplication. And just a general rule of thumb, the number of columns in the row vector must always be equal to the number of rows in the column vector. Um, and if you remember, A and B both were five numbers. So that checked out in this case. Okay. Um, the next thing we'll look at is the dyadic product of vectors. So again, using the same two vectors, we can multiply them, except this time we're doing the column multiplied by the row. And whenever you do multiplication like this with two vectors, you will get a matrix in return as opposed to just a number value. And then another way to show this is Dirac's notation. So this is the bra ket notation. Um, bra denotes a row vector and ket denotes a column. And then if you were to write this out with the A and B that I showed earlier, um, it would look like this. And then in general, again, if you do a bra times a ket, so that's row times column, you would get that scalar product that I mentioned before. And if you did the opposite, column times row, you would get a matrix. Um, yeah, so that's all about vectors. Thank you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. You. Yeah, you're welcome. So, uh, a question. Sure. Since, like, um, maybe when we will do presentations next time, prepare your questions the night before. And uh, maybe we will have only one more set of presentations on projects, so it will be generate questions. Okay. So, um, when you multiply a row by column, you get a number. When you multiply a column by a row, you get a matrix. Yes. Right. What if you multiply the following construction? Row by matrix by column. You would get row by matrix by column. I think you would still get a matrix. Any of you? Wait, let's, so let's, let's vote. Let's well, vote. actually, I don't know because you'd have a number times a matrix. So it's uh, same uh, uh, sizes are compatible. Okay. Right? Same number square matrix. So 
outcome can be a number, a vector, uh, or a matrix. So, who is for the matrix? Mm. One, two, three, four, five. Who is for the vector? I think uh, it might be a vector. Okay. I don't know. Okay, four is one. Who is for the number? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How, how do you, how do you be, I think because the row times column is a number, and then if I was just multiplying this number, I guess by a matrix of the same like, dimensions, it would still be a number. Um, or no? Not, nothing is wrong, but I, I would say the following. Look on the rightmost part of this imaginary problem. Matrix by uh, column will be again a column. Yeah. And then, and then row by row column will be a number. number. Okay. So why do we uh, do we care about it? It's not maybe the only important part of, of this, because we will need to find expectation values of uh, operators. Okay. So it, it is something that is used again and again. Well, thank you for okay. <laughs> uh, enthusiastic and great discussion. Uh, let's thank everyone. All again. right. And you can just go right, know. right, most to the end. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So you can pass the mic you. to the next speaker. Uh, most curious about... Do you know how to start it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you guys probably know better than I do. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. We'll be looking at matrices briefly. Um, well, let's see. The, the four main things, but there's a few other things you can you can just do with, um, with with matrices on MATLAB, such as determinant, but these are the ones I'm going to focus on. Um, we're going to transpose, multiply, find the inverse, and then visualize with the matrices. Uh, this is just a simple setup of what is my matrix A and B, and I'm going to try and use them in the next slide. So basically, uh, matrix A here, two by two, matrix B, two by two. The, the beauty of math, I'll just use my 10 seconds to say this, is that if we do something on a small scale and it works, then as long as the laws are true, they'll work on a large scale. And so we're just going to use basic numbers here. Um, we're going to transpose A. So you would notice that when you take the 1, 2, 3, 4, and now when we transpose it, we get 1, 3, 2, 4. So we have a switch that happens with the rows and the columns. So this happens with a 3 by 3 matrix and so on and so forth. Transposing matrices is important in solving equations sometimes and doing certain things in math. So that's uh, the transposition. You just type in transpose and then put the matrix letter in there and then don't put, well, you don't have to put equals at the end, you just hit enter. So this is now a new matrix I called C. Um, and I apologize if this is a little tiny, but this is just showing how A and B multiply to give us a two by two matrix. And how we do that is we, establish A, establish B, and then A times B, and that will give us the answer. So we've looked at transposing and multiplying. Um, there are formulas which uh, allow us to transpose, you know, that, that there are formulas which want the transpose of a matrix, and that's why we do that sometimes. Next, we're gonna talk about inverse. We're going to take C, which we established from A, and we're going to find the inverse of that by typing I and V and then C in parentheses. So that gives us the inverse. If we multiply C times D, that gives us one, zero, zero, one. We get that diagonal pattern. Same thing will happen if you have a three by three matrix. So that's what the inverse will do to the original matrix. Um, this is a visualization. Uh, there's some applications in physical chemistry, some which I am still yet to master myself, but I will say that this is an example where you have all these numbers. Uh, you first create the matrix E, and now we're gonna visualize it. And I think it's very cool. Um, this is one element of that visualization. If I was on math lab right now, I can turn this 360, but I just turned it around in a different orientation. The application of this could be like with the temperature at different spots on a surface. And that's one way it could be visualized. Um, math lab will make solving equations much quicker because we can solve systems of equations with matrices. We can do a lot of things with matrices. As I said, determinant of a matrix, you guys get that free of charge. So I'll give you that extra. And then, um, yeah, thank you. And I. <laughs> so. And special thank you for being shorter than five minutes.
Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I, it was so interesting that I couldn't waste the time, and then I realized that it's compression in three minutes. Uh, thank you. Very like high density. <laughs> so, any questions to Amos? Uh, I was um, I forgotten to watch time because I was thinking like, what should I ask? Yeah, like. <laughs> No, I feel just fine without the question. So you introduced the um, transpose operation. For yes. No, there is a problem to solve in the test. Oh boy. An example of a matrix that uh, upon application of transpose operation will be not changed. Well, well, I, I mean, I think a diagonal. Yes, exactly. matrix. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, Amos. And we let's go to the next uh, speaker. So, uh, yeah, pre pre prepare questions to each other, to please. Uh, so the next uh, uh, speaker is uh, Hamidou Islam. I, I don't know if, if your name is more than four words. I probably cannot. Um, and it is a way to, to memorize like hydrogen, virtual, iodine. Okay, thank you. Good morning and welcome to this presentation. I'm I'll be presenting eigenvalue problems with MATLAB. And uh, this is the table of content. I will introduce the eigenvalues and eigenvector to you and then how to do it in the MATLAB. Uh, so introduction to eigenvalue and eigenvector is um, eigenvector is in linear algebra an eigenvector of characteristic vector of a square matrix is vector that does not change its direction under associated linear transformation so that's like hard things to uh, you know follow so in <laughs> yeah in simple words uh, it's uh, uh, if v is a vector that is not zero then it is an eigenvector of a square matrix a if a b is a scalar multiple of v this condition should be written as the equation a v is equal to lambda v and if we go to the eigenvalue in uh, the previous equation is a scalar known as the eigenvalue of characteristic value associated with eigenvector v we can find the eigenvalues by determining the roots of the characteristic equation uh, a minus lambda i is equal to zero so that's that's the uh, definition so for a, for an example if a is and n by n matrix, then a non zero vector x is called an eigenvector of A. If Ax is a scalar multiple of x, so Ax is equal to lambda x. The scalar lambda is called the eigenvalue of A, and x is said to be an eigenvector. For example, the vector 2, 0 is an eigenvector for the matrix A minus 2, 0, 0, 1, uh, with eigenvalue lambda uh, is equal to minus 2. So the equation can be written as this. Um, okay. So what we do with uh, eigenvalues and eigenvector and mat MATLAB. So we can do all of those in MATLAB by doing simple comments. So, and just a sec. Calculate the eigenvalue of A, the resultant it would be a column. So the, just type, uh, just uh, put in the information for matrix A and then just eigenvalue A would give us these eigenvalues for the A matrix uh, alternatively use output form to return to eigenvalues uh, in a diagonal matrix so we can just use this uh, d is equal to eigenvalue a matrix so we can learn about you know we can put it in a diagonal uh, matrices okay so the next so calculate the eigenvalue and write write an eigenvector of an a for uh, for calculating the right eigenvector we have to uh, use this command line vd is equal to eigenvalue a it will give us two uh, two eigenvectors, right eigenvectors V and D, and, and then there is we can verify the results by using A multiplied by V is equal to V multiplied by D, and it will give us a value that is close to but not exactly zero. So if we see that A multiplied by V minus V multiplied by D is like something one multiplied A to the power minus fourteen, that's very close to zero but not exactly zero. And then we can just use, uh, you know, the, the, the diagonal D uh, uh, command line to sort the values for the eigenvectors. Uh, so this, those vectors in the matrix D is not sorted. So we can use this sort diag D function to 
make, make them sorted and the i function is actually indicating where the values are coming from so this is from number two this is from number three this is from number five so that's how it became here and then calculating the right eigenvectors v and also the left so there is another eigenvector that is left eigenvector so if we use v d w is equal to eigen a that will give us the right two eigenvectors and also the left one v d and w uh, okay so those are my references and thank you all for your time okay we can So, really interesting talk, and I've heard you think about left and right eigenvectors also that I wasn't using, but it's quite quite helpful. Uh, so, any questions? Unless you were promising to design a question to please come in. Okay. Not at this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, postpone. He, he will ask you a question next time. Yes. Probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, thank you coming just briefly. But how would we go about generating? So we we have to use uh, so diagonal matrix. Uh, this one so d is equal to e i g a comma matrix. This comment will give us this again values in a diagonal matrix. This one, the right one. So we just have to do the eigen, eigen value of A, but comma matrix will give us this uh, in a diagonal matrix. And if we want to generate off diagonal with that, we have to generate that. I think the eigen A will give you the, without the matrix, but for matrix, you have to do it with the matrix. So uh, if you, uh, with, with the interpreter, you Steven is asking not about finding eigenvalues, but just engineering a matrix, like populating along many diagonal, sub diagonal, off diagonal. And uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that if you need to, to do additional research. How to populate a matrix? One can probably write a code just to make a cycle over each index and then populate it by question. But probably, is there a specific command to, to populate it? Uh, I just had a quick question. When you made the, the previous slide, the matrix, did you manually have to type all those that you know to make the four by four, or is there a quicker way to get it lined up with A, matrix A? So it's just you know quicker way to line up matrix A. The, so I you didn't type like one and zero point five and so on. You have to then do what, one by one. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I just plugged in all the matrix numbers one by one. Okay. No, no quicker way. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Suppose it's over the same style as to Amos. Suppose you have a two by two matrix with uh, one and two on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. What are the eigenvalues of this matrix? I think I have to calculate it. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. So matrix is diagonal. There is nothing on the off diagonal. On the main diagonal, there are yes. numbers. One, two. What are the eigenvalues? Ariana is, is, is helping you. She's showing us. Just one and two. Yes. Yeah. So if the matrix is diagonal, then its uh, diagonal values are populated with eigenvalues. Eigenvalues. So okay. If the matrix is, is diagonal, it means you immediately know its eigenvalues. Okay. Make sense? Uh, more questions to please come in. One, two, three. If not, thank you once again. Thank you. So, um, we have four presentations uh, left, and oh, thank you. And uh, now we are going to the uh, question. How do we communicate them to other scientists? How do we um, represent them graphically or as a movies or anything else? Hi, uh, and so today, as uh, Dr. Kinnan said, I'll be talking about uh, how we can actually use MATLAB to plot and generate results. And so, 
starting with plotting and specifically 3D plotting, since obviously we're working with say two dimensional equations um, across X and Y and then maybe through time or something. We can generate in, in a multiple, multiple different ways. So on the left, I just have the little three by three matrix that I generated. And then we can use the command bar and the variable name in this case, X to generate that uh, figure on the far right and just generate a series of different bar graphs. But let's say we want to uh, generate it across three dimensions and show uh, depth. And then we can just use the command bar three variable name and we'll get that center figure, which has the uh, variables shown isometrically at an angle. Now, this is great, but what if we're working with say a matrix like we have been with previous uh, presentations? Then in that case, we actually cannot use the bar command. We need to use uh, specific 3D plotting functions that MATLAB has, which are mesh, mesh, she, surf, and waterfall. And so on the right over there, I just have the uh, matrix that I was generating, uh, just a bunch of numbers put through some trigonomic functions, cotangent, which is your cosine divided by sine. And all of these follow the same uh, basic formatting for uh, commands of X, Y, Z, and C. Uh, C is actually a specific command. It means set color. And for uh, plotting X, Y, and Z, that is if you have, say, instead of a matrix, you have a series of vectors. But since I have uh, matrix A, I can just type A. And so from that matrix A, what do we get? Uh, with mesh, we see we get our results as a series of connected lines showing the nice little pyramidish shape. Uh, mesh C, since C in this case stands for contour, we see a nice uh, similarly color coded uh, contour map projected two dimensionally underneath the graph. Surf is not surface, it, we're not, it's not surfing, it's surface. And so instead of just being a series of connected lines, it's now a series of shaded panels. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, as per usual, the uh, color of the uh, panels is corresponding to their slope. And showcasing the shortcoming of some of these, uh, since I only have three uh, lines in my matrix, waterfall is not particularly useful since rather than uh, connecting across lines, it connects uh, down lines of the matrix. And so we just have three uh, rather dull lines. <laughs> and the other uh, section I'll be talking about is uh, setting particular commands, like uh, say that C. So in this case, font size and line thickness. So there's two ways you can set font size and that's you can either go uh, into the home tab and go to preferences, which will open the preferences window where you can select fonts and change it there. But if you want to change it for say, just a single uh, command, you can do that in the command window of MATLAB with the command uh, single quotation mark font size comma, and then the number which uh, accepts up to any decimal number. So up to like 5.9, 5.76. 5 and yeah, so then you have plot your uh, XY, comma font size, and then whatever number you want. So there's also, you can set the line thickness of the graph. And so that uses the exact same uh, uh, syntax as all of these special MATLAB commands for plotting. Uh, in this case, it's just line width followed by your number. And then taking that surface function from earlier, I've changed it to line width six. And we can see uh, between our two figures here, the change that generates from that. And any questions? Okay, please bring me up. So it is quite a practical uh, question. And maybe there are questions. Someone is uh, imagining using MATLAB to make figures for papers and then to Oh, because those are positive slopes. So they're increasing. And because they are decreasing on the right, they are getting darker actually. So they are decreasing. Yeah, so they 
Yeah. yeah, you can actually see on that really thick, the line thickness six one, there is a slight gradient, but I guess MATLAB doesn't consider negative slopes to be important. Okay. Uh, you can use the yeah, that C, you can use that to set a specific gradient if you want. So yeah, this uh, it's you know a plot x y z c and then after that you uh, put in some more commands specifying like what sort of uh, color gradient you want. I believe MATLAB uses uh, I forget the name, but the standard like uh, two hundred and fifty five. Uh, cyan, magenta, uh, yellow color scheme. But yes, uh, this this is just MATLAB the default if you don't specify color. So if I if I change the color of there's no free sample, so you're a team. In which circumstances one uh, is recommended to use this contour plot? When would you want to use it? Or when, when, when you consider it more beneficial than other ways? Now I wish I kept my original figure, but say if you have, um, maybe a discontinuous function. Yes, yes, uh, excellent answer. So, um, it's, it's related to uh, two dimensional lines. Like if you have not enough brief points, but for humans, we want to create some smooth uh, representation, then uh, you see the actual function is uh, a set of triangles, and on the bottom, it shows something like circles. So it's uh, um, as additional data, which are, which are not data, just to touch human imagination. So I had an original figure that I thought was rather ugly that showcased this as well. But say if we have a very steep uh, because camera is oh yeah, yeah. Say if we have like a very, very steep, yeah. Well, this doesn't show it because it's a, a constant smooth uh slope mostly. But if we have an extremely steep uh sort of spike somewhere, then uh it will actually Show us a very tight consecutive circle, as much like you see on a actual like topographical map. So if this uh, center point was not just ten, but like twenty, and it jumped way up much faster than the rest of the graph, we would see a, a much denser section of uh, contour lines right there. Yes, thank you. More questions? Uh, we do have, uh, I believe, three more. So, next presenter is uh, Haley. So, um, hello. Okay, I'm going to be talking about uh, the keywords when you're scripting save, run, for, and if. I have video examples, so hopefully you can see them okay. Um, but to edit and save a script, first you need to open the script. So I've opened one here. I'm just making a simple comment that says, this is me making changes to my script. Then to save, you can either use Control S on your keyboard, or you can click Save As, and then type in the name. This is kind of in the way. And I've named this one Say Hi. So then it populates with its new name, save, just like you would do with like a, a Word document or something else. Uh, the run keyword, here we go, is how you can run your script. There's two ways to do that. With the green button at the top, we'll run the script down in your command window so you can see this thing is not fun. <laughs> so you can see what the output in your command window. The other way to run your script is to just type the name into the command window, which I've done right here. And it will run in the command window the same way. Um, the for loop is what you can use within your script. So you can put uh, 
you can specify an action for an argument. So here I have 4k from 1 to n, where n is 1, then run my script. So here I'm saying run my script all the way through one time. Then I can change that to 3, which I've done here, and then it'll run through my script three times. What's your name? And then I type in three different names, Haley, Ryan, and I think the last one I picked was like Xavier or something like that. And then the arrows come back in the command window saying, okay, we're ready for you to type in something else. And then the if else keywords. Um, so this is like telling it, if you see this, then do this. Otherwise, do this instead. And so here I used if the user input is empty, nobody typed anything, then display this, oops, you didn't type your name. Otherwise, display hello, which says, hello, name, welcome to NDSU. So, and then we'll put end because it needs to say, needs to think, okay, no, nothing else. That's it. So then if I type my name, it says, hello, Haley, welcome to NDSU. If I don't type anything, you didn't type your name. Make sense? Cool. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, question. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, this end uh, that's tabbed in is for the if else uh, keywords. The end that is aligned up with the for is the end for the for command. Yep, based on how indented it is, they line up so you can see it better. Um, how it is connected to the port? <laughs> um, well, first of all, you can say hi to people <laughs> really easily. Um, also, writing scripts can help you if you want to run like the same calculation over and over again on a number of different things. You can do that through writing a script to do so. I was just reading in, in, in media for the entertainment, there is a world competition of uh, artificial intelligence uh, robots. So uh, there is a um, interface and in one room there is a human, in another room there is a computer with artificial intelligence and the judge talks to both of them and must to tell where is the real person, where is the uh, computer. And uh, uh, the programmer who writes a code that will fool the judge gets a prize. So Hell, you, you are on the right track to get a prize. <laughs> uh, so next uh, presenter is uh, Zoe. And uh, I think uh, it is continuing the same story of uh, making our, our efforts more mechanistic so that we, we work less, computers work more. Correct, correct. Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to be talking about the save and load functions. Upon uh, reflection of our first presentation, function is the wrong word. I should be using command is uh, the correct word. And so uh, as we move along, the purpose of these commands uh, allow you to save and recall um, variables from your workspace. And so these variables are saved in the uh, file, which is .mat. Um, and it is saved into your directory. Um, you can double check these directories by using a command called whos, W-H-O-S. Um, and that will allow you to examine the name, the dimensions of your variables, as well as the size and class of variables for that folder or for that file. Uh, so in my example today, I have defined X, Y, and Z. Uh, and so then I use the save command. And when you do, you give that file a name along with the variables that you would like to save. So in this example, I gave the uh, my file the name example, and I wanted to save X and Z. And then in the side here in your current folder, there will appear your, um, your file. 
And so when it's time to recall the uh, variables that you have saved after it's been a day or you cleared out MATLAB and your workspace is clear, you can recall uh, that the variables that you would like by using the command load along with the file name and the desired variables that you would like. Uh, the variables will show up in your workspace that can be seen on the right. Uh, you can also double check these by using the who command um, and it will tell you what the variables are. Uh, there is a warning when you do this. Sometimes when you load variables uh, that have uh, the same name as variables you're already working with, um, that can cause issues and overwrite so a way around this is to load variables into what is called a structure. Uh, you use the syntax S and then load and then the file name and the desired, um, desired variable. And so you can see that here I have um, recalled my, um, my file name Z, but I put it into a column because I already had a uh, a variable name Z. And so with that, that is my presentation. Okay, who's doing the presentation? So any questions? So I didn't understand that is yes, yes. So S is called a structure. It allows you to pull in um, variables that already have the same name. These structures have what's called fields, and those fields, it's just like a compartment. It's kind so of- So it's always S or something else? I believe like this for is what's called a structure is always S. So then within your S, you can have many different uh, other variables yeah. that you can, yeah, yeah. Really? What if you want to save or load from a directory that's if you wanted to save or load from a different directory, you'd have to change your directory on the top above uh, in your window browser. Is that correct? That's what I would do. <laughs> Go through your computer and try and find the file that you would like. So I don't have an important question and it's for, for everyone. Uh, what is what in which okay, I, I, I'm a little more tricky. Which keyword you need to add in order so the file will be possible to read by uh, other programs so that you can import it into uh, Excel or open as a text. I don't know the keywords, but they are like the standard. Uh, I know like it is the map that I use, like the map file that is used is not um, is not the file that you can use in other ones. Okay. You can use. So anyone remembers this keyword? Can, can, uh, I don't see it here. Anyone remembers what should be because Right now, what uh, Zoe taught to us works well in MATLAB, but then it will be problematic to read by Microsoft Excel. Mm -hmm. Huh? Data. No, not data. Just A. Is it just dot M versus It starts with letter A. A, S, C, I. Yes. So one needs to do A, S, C, I, I. Oh. Do you remember it? Yeah, you, you already showed us, but I recall the But if, if you do not use the keyword, uh, you can save and load back into method, but then it will be like blocked for other code. And what, what does ASCII mean? American coding. Standard code for information. Okay. And Haley, uh, you are reading in the Wikipedia exactly. Haley, <laughs> you just read it out loud. American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, any more questions? One, two, three. Yes, uh, we 
we have uh, one presentation from online. So uh, let me check if. Uh, uh, So you are your co-host. I can stop sharing. Uh, Mel, please uh, start sharing. Enable your microphone and, uh, if possible, camera. Uh, hello, hello, nice seeing you. Uh, hello. <laughs> One second, I have to pull it up. Okay. Okay. One second. It's been a while since I've done this. Share screen. Okay. There we go. Can you guys see it? Yeah, thank you. We can. Okay. All right. Give me a moment, please. Add notes. All right. So I will be discussing animations and movies in MATLAB. So what are animations and movies? Um, they are short clips that show moving images, and animations are essentially just longer, or movies are essentially longer animations. Um, think of it as a flip book. Um, so if anyone's seen like the Disney where they show like flipping it through and that's how it becomes an animation. I am going to credit that to Nate who did this previously in um, fall of 2021. And in MATLAB, it can be of a moving graph, a function changing over time or whatever your imagination wants as long as it's feasible within MATLAB. So why should you use MATLAB to create animations? Because once you practice with it, you can create nice looking graphs like this one and can then show the plotting of this graph. It has a lot of different variables. This graph is also um, by Jiro Doak, who is an applications engineer at the MathWorks. He used MATLAB in his life prior to working at the MathWorks and one of his interests is data visualization. So. All right, so how do you get animations in MATLAB? First, you must use a video channel program to save the animation frames in a file. Um, you will need to do then to find a function. Next, you will plot your function and you can define your axes if desired. Use a command to capture a snapshot of your plot and to get repeated shots, you will use a pause command that will repeat this command X number of times. Also, I realized after <laughs> Haley's presentation, you could use the loop function. I did not use the loop function, but that could have been useful for one of my areas of my script. And then you can also end the script and then close the file. So that sounds pretty simple, right? All right, now I'll show the example. So um, first, uh, the video writer is the video channel program um, that MATLAB uses, but you do have to define your um, file name. So I put vid equals video writer and then uh, in pink, that's what I named my file. And then you'll put open vid, which is going to open that file. And I defined this function z, x, and y, and then I plotted it. It's going to be a 3D function. It is going to be a spiral. And then I put a cur, or the cur frame equals get frame is the command to get the snapshot of your plot and then write video um, and then parentheses vid curve frame is the command that basically will um, put that frame into your video file. And then I put pause for one second and then I put a second function. This function is only slightly different than the first function and it's gonna create a cylinder versus a spiral because Z has more um, plot points. Um, and then you're going to do another 3D plot of it, of X, Y, Z, and then get another frame, write it into the video file, and then I paused for another second. Now all my commands could not fit into a single screen, so this next screen will show the last of it. And then I repeated the um, function for the spiral. I plotted it again. I got that frame and wrote it into the file. 
and then I close the file. So that is important to do that at the very end. And I'm going to show this in slow motion because this is what it would look like in MATLAB if you did it. However, for some reason, if you try to play this file with like video, Windows Media Service, it, it just, it goes like that. It's very quick and you can barely see it. And it says it only lasts for like zero seconds. So I'm not sure what I did with that, but that's why I did slow motion because then you can actually see how it was supposed to go. And I just wanted to show the difference between the spiral and the cylinder in my animation, so. Uh, okay. And here are my references. I used MATLAB, MATLAB online, um, and then a blog post uh, by Jiro Doak of um, how to use MATLAB a little bit. And then um, the functions came from Subarna um, Zoll. And then Nate's presentation gave me inspiration for how to describe the animations. So, yeah, any questions? Uh, thank, thank you, Mo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Mo, would you, uh, any questions are welcome, please. Uh, Mo, would you please show the code? Yeah, this, this. Uh, you want this one with the picture or just the previous um, code? The second one. The second one, this one, okay. Um, okay, so um, any su su suggestions, what can we, mm, so it's not scientific question, the uh, all commands that uh, Mel has presented are correct, but uh, let's do a little brains, brainstorm uh, to uh, decide what can we change to make it a little bit more spectacular? Some more pause time. That way it will be not that fast, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a it's very healthy idea of Hamidou to add pause. Pause, yes. and uh, there is a, if, if one use pause without argument, it will uh, stay still until a human hits the button. Instead, one can do pause and then in the brackets, like put 0.1 delay in seconds, or um, I don't know, in some units. Um, oh, my Zoom is working. Uh, any, any other ideas, especially how, uh, Haley, what do you think about this code and how can you suggest to, to improve it? Not criticize, but improve it to make it more spectacular. You could use a for loop. Exactly, exactly, yes. <laughs> so um, the whole idea of uh, making movies is if something changes over time, right? And uh, uh, the cycle over, over Z, right, can be uh, the, instead of defining uh, Z as um, the... In, instead of defining the as, as a whole line, one can, can we go, can we go back to the, to the, <laughs> uh, Mel, just can we quickly go to the, to the script yet? Yes. I, I think you're, you're trying to, to make changes as, as we go and maybe, maybe. Oh no, I was just trying to show it in MATLAB because the, the video was slower in MATLAB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, did you want this one or those? This one or, or when you, when in MATLAB when you show the whole script. Oh, okay. Yes, I can do that. Just give me a moment. Zoom is, I'm not good with Zoom. Here we go. Can you all see it now? Yes, excellent, thank you. So if we take line 10 and replace Z equals to four Z equals blah, blah, blah. And then uh, before close vid, uh, bet between 22 and 23, uh, we will insert one more line and, and just put end as Haley taught us. Then uh, it will uh, plot not the whole spiral, but a, a one dot, right? But this dot will evolve in time and space, right? So we can, uh, 
uh, maybe if Mel will send this code to everyone, we can uh, just process it uh, towards our, our meeting on in, in Wednesday and start the meeting from practicing it. Mo, would you, would you uh, uh, volunteer to share this code? Yes. Um, oh, I just have to share this file, right? Yes. The, okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay, yeah, I, I think it will be re really good practice and we all will benefit because uh, very soon we all will run other codes which are like maybe not 100, but like 50 times longer and which will do movies. Uh, any more questions to Mel? Any more questions from Mel to anyone in the class? Uh, no, I think I got everything. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, let's uh, please join me in thanking Mel once again. So everyone, it, it was a tremendous work you, you and effort you put. So you all are getting best possible grade in your midterms. So that you're progressing well towards the end of the of the first part of the class, and uh, let let me uh, we are going to depart uh, in peace. <laughs> in 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 few minutes, let me give a, a little heads up, and uh, we can collectively plan our efforts. So, um, on coming Wednesday, I plan to share codes for your actual projects, and uh, so that you can start earlier. Um, we, we will speak the, the whole meeting, but very, very briefly. Um, we are going to describe H2 plus, right? So we will have a code where we specify position of first and second ion. And then the code will find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the electron in this potential where electron is attracted. So uh, we will get like orbitals and, and energies. So this code needs to be run multiple times and maybe we will make that uh, each class at ND will run it uh, once again with different parameters. So once for distance like R0. Second time it needs to be run where this uh, R0 plus delta r and then the orbitals will look differently and the energies will be either bigger or, or smaller and we need to record uh, this eigenstates as function of the interatomic distance and scan all possible distances both short and long this is not the whole story uh, I, I, I will work how, how we spread credit and how we do presentations but this input information of uh, of the energies like minimal energy and the next energy then can be plotted as function of, of r and it will form the potential energy surfaces how the interatomic uh, forces in this molecule depend on on the distance in both ground and excited right and then there will be stage two where we will place a system in the excited and see how it evolves over time, looking towards breaking of the, of the chemical bond. So just uh, overarching idea what we will be doing on uh, Wednesday. And then um, in, in a week and two days from now, next Wednesday, uh, there will be a conference that some of the class attendees are traveling to, including myself, but uh, so that we, we keep working, the postdoc from my group will come and help uh, uh, to do Wednesday projects so that we, 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 we go forward. And for Monday, I will either record a lecture or deliver it uh, through, through Zoom. But uh, we will be kind of missing two lectures on one Monday and then uh, in, in another one, there will be President's Day. So uh, I, I need to design how to speed up. But at least the projects will, will not suffer from, from these uh, things. Okay, um, thank you once again. I, I hope you are happy with the way how it is organized and how we progress towards uh, the class. Meeting is done. Everyone welcome to disconnect and depart and uh, looking forward to see you come on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.
Bye. Bye-bye.